I cannot hold, for though to write were rude, yet to be silent were ingratitude, and folly too, for if posterity should never hear of such a one as thee, and only know the sage's brutish fame, they would think virtue nothing but a name. And though far abler pence must her define, yet her adoption hath engaged mine, and I must own where merit shines so clear, tis hard to write, but harder to forbear. Sprung from an ancient and an honored stem, who lent her luster, and she paid at them, who still in great and noble things appeared, whom all their country loved, and yet they feared. Match to another good and great as they, who did their country both oblige and sway. Behold herself, who had without dispute more than both families could contribute. What early beauty grief and age had broke, her lovely reliques and her offspring spoke. She was by nature and her parents care a woman long before most others are. But yet that antedated two seasons she improved to virtue, not to liberty, for she was still in either state of life meek as a virgin, prudent as a wife and she well knew, although so young and fair, justly to mix obedience love and care, while to her children she did still appear so wisely kind, so tenderly severe, that they from her rule and example brought a native honor, which she stamped and taught. Nor can a single pen enough commend so kind a sister and so clear a friend. A wisdom from above did her secure which is t'was peaceable, was ever pure. And if well-ordered commonwealths must be patterns for every private family, her house, ruled by her hand and by her eye, might be a pattern for a monarchy. Solomon's wisest woman less could do, she built her house, but this preserved hers too. She was so pious that when she did die, she scarce chang place, I'm sure not company. Her zeal was primitive and practic too, she did believe, and pray, and read, and do. A firm and equal soul she had engrossed, just even to those that disobliged her most. She grew to love those wrongs she did receive for giving her the power to forgive. Her alms I may admire, but not her late, but her own works shall praise her in the gate. Her life was checkered with afflictive years, and even her comfort seasoned in her tears. Scarce for a husband's loss her eyes were dried, and that loss by her children half supplied, when heaven was pleased not these dear probes afford, but tore most off by sickness or by sword. She who in them could still their father boast, was a fresh widow every son she lost. Litigious hands did her of right deprive, that after all t'was penance to survive. She still these griefs hath nobly undergone, which few support at all, but better none. Such a submissive greatness who can find? A tender heart with so resolved a mind? But she, though sensible, was still the same, of a resigned soul, untainted fame, nor were her virtues coarsely set, for she outdid example in civility to bestow blessings, to oblige, relief, was all for which she could endure to live. She had a joy higher in doing good, than they to whom the benefit accrued. Though none of honor had a quicker sense, never had woman more of complacence, yet lost it not in empty forms, but still her nature noble was, her soul gentile. And as in youth she did attract, for she the verger had without the vanity, so she in age was mild and grave to all, was not morose, but was majestical. Thus from all other women she had skilled to draw their good, but nothing of their ill. And since she knew the mad tumultuous world, saw crowns revered, temples to ruin hurled, she in retirement chose to shine and burn, as a bright lamp shot in some Roman urn. At last, when spent with sickness, grief and age, her guardian angel did her death presage, so that by strong impulse she cheerfully dispensed blessings, and went home to die, that so she might, when to that place removed. Mary his ashes whom she ever loved, she died, gained a reward, and paid a debt. The sun himself did never brighter set. Happy were they that knew her in her end, more happy they that did from her descent, a double blessing they may hope to have, one she conveyed to them, and one she gave. All that are hers are therefore sure to be blessed by inheritance and legacy. A royal birth had less advantage been. Tis more to die a saint than live a queen, 